Good morning, you glorious gamers. Garbs here, and today we're going to talk about the 35th anniversary of Zelda and what that can mean for the Nintendo Switch. And as always, guys, if you could super smash that subscribe button, turn on notifications, really help out the channel. Now let's talk Zelda. Now I know this year is supposed to be about Mario and his 35th birthday, but let's not forget his counterpart, Zelda. Now in all honesty, Zelda is my absolute favorite franchise, so it got me wondering, what's Nintendo going to do to celebrate Hyrule in 2021? The first rumor that seems really possible is that we're going to get Skyward Sword as an HD remake. Now I'm really hoping that for this remake, you get the choice between motion controls or using a pro controller. If they did it for Galaxy, hopefully they'll do it for Skyward Sword. Whether you like motion controls or not, let's put that aside and just focus on the story of Skyward Sword. This is truly the genesis of the entire franchise. It's where it all begins. You have Demise, Link, Zelda, which complete the Triforce of power, wisdom, and courage. You have Demise's curse, which binds Link and Zelda's ancestors for all eternity. And even though Fi is an annoying character, and most people don't like her as a companion, the fact that she becomes the soul of the Master Sword makes that weapon that much more important. Now the biggest reason that I think this rumor is true is that Skyward Sword for Switch was actually found on Amazon UK and was quickly deleted earlier this year. And this is the only 3D Zelda game that hasn't been touched up, so come on Nintendo, do this one for us. Now the second thing I would love to celebrate Zelda's 35th birthday is that we get the two Wii U ports on the Switch. And that would be Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. When the game came out, the art style was really controversial. However, it's become really adored by the Zelda community. And with the remake, they added a few features which really helped out, like the Swift Sail. And yeah, it might not be the hardest Zelda game of all time, but I played it recently and it still holds up as a great adventure. Now to contrast, you have Twilight Princess, which is a dark and gloomy game. Even throughout its linearity, the story is so well done. The final fight with Ganondorf as you stab the Master Sword through his chest is outstanding. Wolf Link was a really cool novelty, and I wish Nintendo used him a lot more. And how could you forget about Migna, probably one of the best characters in the entire franchise, hands down the best companion. The remake is absolutely amazing, except for the addition of stickers which are pretty much useless. Now I already know a lot of you are going to complain, saying that you already have them on Wii U, so why buy them for Switch, and that's just a big money grab by Nintendo. However, these are amazing games, and not many people had them because no one had a Wii U. So if you really want to spread the love of Zelda, then yeah, bring these on to Switch so that everybody can enjoy them. As we've now established, I'm a huge Zelda fan, and I'll pay Nintendo whatever it is just so I can get more Zelda. But one of the biggest surprises last year was that in September, they released Link's Awakening. Now before the remake, this was already one of my favorite Zelda games, and then when they came out with this remaster, it was unbelievable. The best way to describe Link's Awakening is it's quirky. You have a bunch of characters from the Mario franchise like Chain Chomps and Goombas in it, but it also is really fitting because it's all just in the dream of the Windfish. When they did the remake and the art style of this kind of claymation toy aesthetic, and you know what? Even though this game is really cutesy on the outside, the feeling that you have to destroy Copeland Island is actually really tragic. Even though it was just a dream and you had to wake up the Windfish, it's still one of Link's best adventures today. I love the art style in this game, and sure, there were a few frame drop issues, but why are we going to waste this beautiful engine? I think we should remake Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. Now the beautiful thing about these adventures is that they were meant to be played together, which means it makes total sense to put them on one cartridge. If the success of Link's Awakening has taught us anything, it's that the handheld games will definitely sell, especially with that art style. Now most of you are wondering, what's Nintendo going to do when it comes to Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask? Now they've already done two massive upgrades to these games on the 3DS. They both looked stunning and played amazing, so why not make them 1080p widescreen and then put them together just like they did with Mario 3D All-Stars. Maybe we call it the Hero of Time Collection instead of All-Stars. Some of you in the comments might say that they're not going to do it because they've already released these games a million times. And to them I say, they're still going to release it again because these are the best games of all time. Now the final thing that I think Nintendo will do for the 35th anniversary of Zelda is they're going to release Breath of the Wild 2. And not just the game, I think it'll be released with the new Switch model. Breath of the Wild 2 is one of the most anticipated sequels of all time. It's also going to be really interesting knowing that this is the first Zelda game to actually be developed for the Switch. Because don't forget, Breath of the Wild was actually built for the Wii U in mind and then was ported over to the Switch. So I'm sure the graphics and gameplay will be that much better and the need to save Hyrule will be outstanding. Now all we can do is speculate due to the trailer, but we're all pretty sure that that's Ganondorf at the bottom of Hyrule Castle. And the malice coming from his chest is going to reawaken the Dark World or something like that. Even though personally I was a little disappointed in Breath of the Wild due to the fact that there was only four main dungeons and the Divine Beasts weren't really temples or dungeons like traditional Zelda games, this time around I have high hopes that they're going to build more temples more along the lines of Ganon's Castle. Now we know this game's coming because a few trailers have already been dropped, so now the question is when are they going to drop it? Well it makes sense to do it on the 35th anniversary of Zelda. 
Breath of the Wild was the reason that you bought a Switch originally, so it makes sense to launch the sequel with the new Switch Pro. Nintendo's gonna have to compete with the new systems coming up from PlayStation and Xbox. Nintendo will never compete with them on a graphical standpoint, but they can beat them on first party releases. So alongside the new Switch Pro, which hopefully has 4K, why not bring on Breath of the Wild 2, and then in 2022, we launch the next Mario Odyssey. That's all for today, guys, and those are just my predictions for the 35th anniversary of Zelda. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And don't forget, everyone, on the 18th, we start our full walkthrough of Mario 64 on the brand new All-Star 3D Collection. Also, don't forget to check out my pros and cons list for the 3D Mario Collection. Happy gaming.